Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Afis. In today's video, um, I'm here with Ali and we'll be talking about basically finance and just like personal experience and everything we have in Canada, moving from Nigeria to Canada. So um, uh, please like, comment and subscribe to this channel and let's get right into the video. Hi everyone, my name is Ali and um, the topic is just gonna blow your mind and I hope. Okay, life is just about unlearning for you to be able to learn new things because we are now in Canada and you know, kind of ball rolling the game and taking it from where we can, right? Yeah. So, yeah, Afiz, yeah. welcome Thank and you. Uh, good to see you, man. Thank you for yeah, you're looking really good, you <laughs> Thank know. You so yeah, much, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad you know we managed to come to kind of you know get yeah. this going. So, um, yeah, um, Afiz, what is it like, you know, for you for the past few days because you've been quite... What, what's going on in, in the world of business that we're not really aware of? I just feel like um, people, like, we are starting to realize what it's like in the financial... A lot of people are getting more into the finance and people are just realizing that, oh, yeah, the things that they're not being taught in school, they, they, they're realizing it by themselves. Yeah. And they just feel like, oh yeah, this is the right thing to do. This is the right thing that you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to do. Because in school, they don't teach you much about finance. Okay. So, like for example, now cryptocurrency, the topic is going all over. And so a lot of people are, are starting to like do more research and they start seeing like opportunities that they can use to make like money and stuff. Absolutely. So. I feel like that's what's going on right now in the financial world. Yeah, talking about crypto, I had so much rave going on down yeah. and um, apparently people seem to be doing quite well. And actually, for the record, we're not here on promoting any brand yeah. <laughs> like crypto, right? It's, this is just the topic that's like randomly just yeah. um, come up. So, you know, because I'm interested, you know, in uh, kind of, you know, trying to tap into to, to it, you know, can you just, you know, give a little bit more about it? How does it work and what is actually crypto? Okay, um, let me just start from how everything got started yeah. with cryptocurrency. Yeah. So it all started back in 2008. Mm -hmm when there was a big global financial crash in the market mm -hmm. and the people realized that the bank or let me say i don't want to say the government but like you know yeah, the banks that the governments are used are doing what they're not supposed to do yeah. and in 2009 you know there was a financial crash in 2008 mm -hmm. and in 2009 some group of people or just one person so people believe it's one person other people believe it's a group of people right mm -hmm. so they came together and they were like, they realized when, when people realized that the government are doing what they're not supposed to do, they came together and they were like, how can we go about making a transaction, making a payment between each other without the, without using the bank or without using the government or without using like without them knowing about the transaction. So they came up with um, Bitcoin in 2009. So Bitcoin was originally created to solve the problem of payments between each other without using the bank, oh, right? Wow. So when when that like got started, they created Bitcoin in 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. then the problem of payment was a little bit solved, mm -hmm. but it would, um, a lot of people don't know much about it yet. Mm -hmm. So now that was, that started shifting from 2009 till now that we have every other cryptocurrency. So every other cryptocurrency that we have right now, they are created to solve one problem or the other, right? Mm -hmm. So like, I'll give an example for example, XRP was created to solve the problem of um, transaction. Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say you want to send money to the UK mm -hmm. and you're using the bank. Mm -hmm. It would take like a couple of days mm -hmm. or even hours wow. before the person can receive the money yes. but if you're sending cryptocurrency to that person mm -hmm. or if let's say you even want to use the bank and the bank are operating on the repo um, network which is with they use xrp mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the transaction will be more faster than waiting for like three to five days before the person can receive the money right. the person will receive the money in seconds wow. so everything about crypto is created to solve a problem 
so that's why we we have like bitcoin and altcoins so altcoins called also known as alternative coins they are created uh, there are any coins that are not bitcoin so any coins that is not bitcoin is altcoin so bitcoin is on its own altcoin is on its own so now a lot of people uh like there is adoption coming in for the cryptocurrency market so that's why like you see a lot of people getting to find out like how useful it is without like how useful and how private it is um, operating on the blockchain technology without using the bank and everything so that's basically what cryptocurrency is amazing yeah yeah and then um, let's say i mean someone like, like me mm -hmm. i am clueless well I, i've never really done you know this um, online yeah you know um investment and stuff mm -hmm. okay i'm coming in and then i knock i knock in your office <laughs> you know office i need help you know i had so much you know going on with this crypto and this um you know start going on what do i do where do i start where would you start with me is there a certain amount that i need to get started you know for like a minimum and a maximum uh is, i mean where does one get started but to get started with crypto you can literally start with anything you can start with one dollar you can start with two dollars oh, wow. depending on your pocket mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but to really know what to buy yeah. you need to do research on what the problem um, the problem that the coin you want to buy is solving mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like how the, the token distribution because everything about crypto is like you need to understand the problem they're solving first the, the if you want to invest you need to make sure that the whatever you're investing in whatever cryptocurrency that you're investing in has is providing value as like um value what i mean by value is that it has like useful they're useful right for for bitcoin now like for example bitcoin is used to solve payments mm -hmm. and xrp is used to solve cross-border payments mm -hmm. for fast transactions right. all over the world it's right like, uh, yeah but just something like that but even western union yeah. if they start operating on the repo network mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the way the rate at which they're sending money to countries yeah. will be much faster than the way it is right now but like if you want to get into crypto so that's, that's IP. X. no xrp X, sorry xrp okay. yeah so xrp that's like also an institution the, the xrp that's... is a coin but the company that is behind XRP is Repo. Wow. So in the process of using operating on the Repo network, mm -hmm. they will use XRP for transaction. Wow. So if you want to get into crypto, mm -hmm. you really need to know the problem that a particular coin or a particular crypto is solving. Mm -hmm. You don't just want to invest in what you don't know about. So you can literally buy a portion of that coin you know for stocks now if you want to buy um a shares of a company mm -hmm. you can buy half you can buy like quarter you need to buy just one yeah. but for cryptocurrency you can buy a portion of it right mm -hmm. so when you buy a portion of it let's say you only have ten dollars you can buy a portion of one which is ten dollars so let's say one one bitcoin is fifty thousand mm -hmm. you can buy a portion of that fifty thousand so um, and everything about crypto is based on demand and supply, right? So you see how I said Bitcoin was used is used for payment um, to solve payment problem, right? That's right. There is a um, supply limit for it. So when there is a supply limit for something and there is high demand for it, that's what drives the price up. Right. You know, as the US dollars or the, the fiat money. Mm -hmm they can print anytime they don't have like a limited supply so that's why inflation is going up high because there's no limits to printing they can literally print anytime right so in cryptocurrency you need to understand that the supply and the demand for the coin you need to have that in mind too before you can invest in any cryptocurrency so um who are the actually the right people that you think should go for crypto um is it safe for let's say africans yeah literally anybody in, in africa i'm talking about. yeah literally anybody can get into crypto actually 
the amount of Bitcoin transaction or crypto transaction yeah, yeah. in the world is actually coming from Nigeria, being the number one. Oh, then okay. American being the America being the number two. Oh, that's uh, yeah. That's something completely new. I'm, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Absolutely. So a lot of people are using like cryptocurrency in Africa, mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm and other African countries. Yeah, so yeah. literally anybody can get into crypto. Well, I guess uh, this is uh, where the preparation of research comes in. You yeah. now getting the right info from the right source. Yeah? Because you are already, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, a member, you know, so definitely you should be the best person to, to actually advise. Okay, well, yeah, and um, the second question, uh, you know, you've been in, 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 in Canada for some time now, yeah. right? Coming all the way from from Nigeria. Yeah. What is it like for you and um, in the transition, you know, I and mean, in the decision? I mean you were doing you seem to be doing well even back in Nigeria and um, what was the move like for you? Uh it was a crazy move. I wasn't I wasn't really doing well because I I was just coming from high school in Nigeria okay. when I came to Canada, right? Okay. Okay. So when I came from Nigeria to Canada I don't really know what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I had to go back to high school here mm -hmm. for another one and a half or two years, oh, wow. right? So when I was in high school, that was when I made the decision that, oh yeah, I'm going to go into this because when I was back home, my friends, my um, classmates, they were telling me, oh yeah, you should, you should go for nursing. You fit nursing. So obviously, oh they are seeing something in me that i'm not yes. seeing myself right? right so like you know what just a few minutes you know kind of you know with this interaction i can also tell there's this caring the energy of healing yeah i guess it's you know something to do with um you know kind of you know touching people in in in, in a different way yeah that people can pick up in you to kind of you know also advise you in that. i guess i guess that's what they see in me that they say like oh yeah you should go for nursing yeah but back home, I always have the mindset of business. Mm -hmm. I always have the mindset of like having my own business. I always have the mindset of running a business, mm -hmm. right? I never had the plan of going into nursing because back home I was into I was a commercial student. I don't know if you understand what that yeah, means. Yeah, yeah. So when I came here, I don't. The goal of me starting a business or or establishing the business here was dead gone. Like I don't know how to get started and everything. So the thought of my friends telling me what they were telling me back home or what they told me back home that, oh, you should go for nursing, you should do this. That's when I was like, okay, I know what I want mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So when I was in high school, I made the decision that, yeah, I'm going to study nursing. Mm -hmm. So by the time I finished high school, I had to do like, um, you know, like I said, I never had science subject. I was a commercial student back home. So I had to do the pre-health nursing to have the biology, chemistry, that, and that physics. Takes, that, take, that can take some time, right? Yeah. So I was in school for a year. Then I realized I don't think this is my calling. I don't think this is for me. Um, I really want to do business. So I took a year off to really figure out who I am and what I want and what I really want to do not what people are telling me to do. Actually, I love that that part, saying that, you know, you took a year off. Yeah. Which you actually, you know, can, you know, you, you can afford to do that in Canada. In Canada, yeah. Imagine back home, there is no that luxury. Opportunity. You know, or that, or that opportunity of you being able to take some time off and decide. It kind of, you know, it's like, you know, on the lane, mm -hmm. like constantly on the run. And kind of, you know, here it gives you that the opportunity yeah, yeah for you to kind of you know pause yeah that's why like I, I, i'm very grateful to be in this country because like you know a lot of opportunity you, on, if you check the play number it says you also discover right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if you know what you're doing you really discover who you are and that's what right. you really want to do that's right. so i took the year of school yeah. to really figure out mm -hmm. what i want mm -hmm. like who i am and what i really want to do and not what not what people are telling me to do. That's right. So I took the year off. I realized I'm really interested in business. Mm -hmm. Like since back home, I really want to do business. I really want to have my own business. Right. So um, I I won't say I dropped out, but because I finished and I got a certificate. Oh, right. Oh, that's amazing. I finished just one year, oh, and I got a certificate. Amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. But after that, I I never thought of going back 
and continue with the dream of being a nurse, right? Mm -hmm. So I called my dad. I explained, thank God he's a, he's a very understanding man. You know, all parents want you to like go to school and everything. Well, that's the problem. <laughs> they actually have the image of us mm -hmm. and who they want us to become. Yeah. But they've never really sit with us and, and really understand. tap into our inner soul Interest. and actually find out who we are, you know, and what we actually come to serve, the purpose that we are here for. Right. And then help us find that direction. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I just feel like all parents should be open minded to their kids and let them express how they feel and what they want to do, right? But thank God my own dad, it was like a very understanding man, thank God for him. I explained to him that this is what I'm facing right now. This country is different from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that I'm in I'm in a total different world right now. Mm -hmm. Because my dad is not here, he's back home. So I explained to him everything, like, and my plans. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think I'm ready for school. Yeah. I don't yeah. think school is for me. Then he asked me my plans. I told him and everything. Mm -hmm. Then he said, if that's what I want to do, it's going to back it up with prayers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I when, I, when I took the year of school, that was back in, from 2017, I finished in, I started from August, January yeah. 2017. And I finished in August 2017. Oh. So from August 2017, I haven't stepped back in school. So from since then, I've been teaching myself, like doing self-education about finance, digging, digging more into like finance, trying to understand how it works here in Canada. That's right. That's so I know like, what is it like to start a business? Mm -hmm. What is it like to like, do what i really want to do right so that's when i was doing my own research i started doing a lot of research and i just got lost into it that right. i felt it's like it can be overwhelming. yeah so i felt like i'm loaded with too much information yeah. that's why i'm just, i decided like okay yeah i think i want to start a youtube channel mm -hmm. that talks about finance that's so right. my channel basically talks about finance and personal experience not like something i don't know like i would just go on Absolutely. and now my dad mm -hmm. is now my biggest fan wow, of my good. channel he's gonna call me oh, when are you dropping the next video oh, when are you dropping the well, next video that's you know really, really nice. so he's really proud of me so i feel like me coming from nigeria to canada and trying to figure out who i am and i'm able to explain it to my dad i feel like people coming from nigeria or any other country to Canada or maybe to a, a foreign country, right. they should really take their time to figure out what they really want and what they want to do. Because like, you don't want to go to school for something you don't have passion for. Because if you end up finishing that thing, if you end up finishing from that thing that you went to start in school, you might not like, like the job at the end of the day, then do you want to go back to school for another year? That's a waste of time, right? It's, it's actually unfortunately so much of us we you know we're forced to take certain decisions right. that we actually not ready for. Not ready for yeah. But we do it in order to please others. To please our parents. Yes. And then that is always end up causing issues to us to mm -hmm. us. And um, and that, that culture of pleasing for some somehow we need to find a way of kind of you know and do it i think the parents have to do a lot in that part too because like the parent not really the parent but the child or the person because if you want to tell your parent that this is what you want to do and you're not showing them that you really have passion for it mm -hmm. they won't want to support you on that right Absolutely. like me now when i told my dad yeah. he he could see the passion in like that he could see the passion in me that, oh, this is what I really want to do, right? And it was like, if you want to do it, then go for it. Mm -hmm. So I think parent needs to take time to listen to their children, yeah. not like force them and be like, oh, yeah, this is what I want you to do, mm -hmm. and you must do it. No. Mm -hmm. awesome. They should let the, the, the child yeah. to decide for themselves what they want to, because at the end of the day, if they satisfy their parents, and at the end of the day, they don't like that thing, right? They might not. They might end up not doing it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the parent need to like listen to that child and see what they really want, not like what they want them to do. You know. So what would you? What would your advice be for anyone 
you know, trying to move to Canada, what, where would they start it? Um, is the perforation starting all the way back in Nigeria or do they have to be firstly here and then kind of figure a way out and when they get here, where, did they, where should they start? Okay. To me, I feel like the, pep, the, the preparation would be right from Nigeria mm -hmm. because I think like if you want to travel now, yeah. obviously you will know like months or even one year ahead that you want to travel. Absolutely. So my advice to people that are coming from Nigeria mm -hmm. to maybe, maybe not, not only Nigeria, from African country in general yeah. Yeah. to like a foreign country, yeah. they should start preparing from back home. Because like over here, the skilled labor is more like there's more money in skilled labor. Mm -hmm. So when I said skilled labor, I'm talking about barbering, like air stylists and all that. So okay. if it's so something that they can you, learn, you bar, like a, the barber bar, shop, yeah, and then like a hair salon, mm -hmm. like a hairstylist, and right, okay, and what else? So anything, anything, anything that. Anything that got to do with with skills, okay. mechanic, anything. Okay. So from back home, if you know that, yeah, I'm going to this particular country mm -hmm. in a year, mm -hmm. you can start learning from the people that know, like maybe apprentice, like be an apprentice, like go to people that really know, maybe a mechanic shop and start working for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that way, or go to a barber shop and start learning how to cut people's mm -hmm. hair. Mm -hmm. So that way, when you come here, even if you don't have a job <laughs> or you have a skill, yeah. You can still develop yourself. That's right. right? Um, like how do you develop that skill fully to the Canadian standard? Or, you know, is there any standard or level that you need to be for you to just come into Canada and straight to work? No, I don't think, like, like I said, from the preparation we start from Nigeria, yeah. that, that within one year that you leave the country, mm -hmm. you're already learning and you if you already master your craft from back home, mm -hmm. It will be a like a great thing for you, <clears throat> even if you don't fully know, if you don't fully master your craft, but you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Let's say, if, let me use barbering for example yeah. now. So let's say you learn how to barb from back home, yeah. and you master your craft. You're already mm -hmm. cutting people's hair mm -hmm. under one year. Mm -hmm. When you come to a different, when you go back, when you go to a different country, social media has helped a lot. You can start like maybe cutting your friend's hair for free. Mm -hmm. When you come here, when you make new friends, yeah. just it's just have to like when you you have to make connections, yes. right? Okay. So when you make new friends, you can start by cutting the hair for free, hmm. or making like hair stylists making wow. the hair for those, free first. Those, those braids. So that way, you use it to get your brand, hmm. take pictures, post it on social media, Snapchat, start making friends. Mm -hmm. When people see that your handwork, that what you're doing is good. They will rush you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like a barber now, for example, if you're really good at barbering mm -hmm. and you move to Canada. Mm -hmm. So and when you move to Canada, you need to make friends first, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So when you make friends first, you yeah. tell them, oh, yeah, I, I can barber. I'm a barber from back home. Just give me a chance. Let me cut your hair. And if they, of, unfortunately, they let you cut their hair, just make sure you like, do your best Definitely. even though it's free yeah. you I'm you have sure to start from right. somewhere right you have yeah. to start building your brand up right so when when you when they really like what what you do on that thing you mm -hmm. take pictures for them mm -hmm. even with them they will they, they might shout you out on their social media platform so i feel like social media help will help a lot will help a lot in the process also mm -hmm. and you need to make friends so when you start cutting your friends hair for free and they start like giving you a free promo on their social media platform yeah. too. Then people start adding you. Oh, can you come make my hair like this? Nice. Can you come make my hair nice. like you know? Oh, that that's how like you you become more and more like popular. That you wouldn't even need like a nine to five job. You just based on your skilled labor. Absolutely. You get yeah. so from there you can like build yourself up. I like that, you know, I like what you just said, you know, then you wouldn't need, you know, like um day to day job from you know, like the job that you start, you know, from morning to leave. That was what I realized yeah. when I came to Canada. When I dropped out of school, that was what I realized. Mm -hmm. When I took time to like really understand how yeah. everything works. Yeah. That was when I realized, oh I messed up. I should have learned something from back home. Wow. Maybe like 
how to vibe or something, you know. But unfortunately, still, the, I, I, there's yeah. still a lot of opportunities, Absolutely. you know. So, you, your advice, you know, would you say that one should uh, be self-employed in Canada? You know, where do you think one have more chances of making it? Is it like through self-employment or do you have to work for a company? You know, is it like weighing, weighing the options? Yeah, weighing the options. I yeah. think if you really want to make it in Canada, yeah. You can make it by working for somebody. Yeah. You 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 only my own opinion though. Mm. I feel like you can only make it if you work for yourself. Yeah. yeah. But if you can you and at the same time you don't if you can if you don't have the opportunity to work on your by um by yourself mm -hmm. immediately mm -hmm. you can start doing some job nine to five job just to push what whatever goals that you have yeah. like let's say let's say you want to buy some equipment mm -hmm. and you don't have money yet yeah, yeah. you can go to a nine to five job mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to make money to buy the equipment yeah. that you want yeah. then when you have those equipment you then be doing it as a side also mm -hmm, mm -hmm, then you're mm -hmm. doing your main job and you're doing what your skills as a side also so when you skill now when you're making more money on your ski on your side also yeah. like your side also mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. like maybe let's say barbering for mm -hmm. example mm -hmm. when you realize that you're making more money and you're getting comfortable then you don't need to night that you don't need a nine to five job anymore. Yeah. 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 then then you can start working for yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i think it's working for somebody it's gonna help yeah i, I, I would it's recommend that stone. yeah it's a yeah. stepping stone that I, I wouldn't you see a lot of people say nine to five is a scam and all that no, it's it's not a scam. Not really a scam, if you know what you're doing. But like, you can use that to for your like your passion, journey, yeah. your Absolutely. passion. I'm actually very very glad you know for this conversation. It went really well. No. I'm privileged, and I think we're gonna definitely need to touch base again. No problem. There's like so much topic that you still need to talk <laughs> you still about. Need to be a... But you know, I guess we're gonna have to do them in chunks so that you know we can try and get the right message, message right. out there mm -hmm. you know to those needed the most right okay yeah so yeah that's it for me now it's been great talking to you and we'll see you guys soon take care I gave you my heart.